God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars were made to worship so light, I can see.
Impact. So uh, for starters, thank you for your generosity. Uh, like that video said, when we give, it makes a difference. In fact, one of the ways that it makes a difference is that we support a, a home called Angel's Place. Angel's Place is ran by a lady that comes to church here. And it's a home for ladies that are coming out of an abusive relationship, maybe after a drug or alcohol problem. And it's a place for them to start. Well, I got the chance yesterday to meet a lady named Heather who gave her life to Jesus at Angel's Place and that she wanted to follow the Lord in baptism. So we've been doing baptisms, kind of through, several of them, all throughout the summer. And we captured yesterday's, uh, earlier today, I combined it with some of the other baptisms that we did. And I wanted to show them to you so that we can celebrate them together. I'm showing this this weekend at our worship center. I wanted to share this with you. And then I want to share a crazy idea that maybe you can help us with. All right, so first, Watch this video about life change happening right here at Impact because of your faithfulness and your generosity. Watch this. I am created by God. He designed me so I am not a mistake. This, this is going to be really cool. It's going to be simple. It's going to be quick, but it's an important day for you. That was when I just gave up. You know, I had to because I know 
If I wouldn't have came, I would have been dead. I would have. My life has changed. My focus and my understanding of my faith have also given me a new understanding of God's love for me. And the life I was living was not good. So yeah, you got plenty of support here with you, man. It's like the best feeling ever to know that I have somebody no matter what. Even if I do make bad decisions, he's going to forgive me. Do you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Yes, I love him. So do you believe that Jesus is Christ? 100%. Be buried with Christ. Be buried with Christ. <laughs> 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 There's nothing more amazing. Like, like it all it all makes sense, right? Whenever that life change happens. Because then it's about more than events or more than songs or more than messages. When life change happens, it just all makes sense. So I was wondering. So this weekend, Ronnie's kicking off a series that we're calling Summer Vibes. And Summer Vibes is basically it's going to be taking our favorite parts of summer, some words that just attach to summer, and we're going to find parallels and use those as topic starters for something that the Bible has to say about how you and I should live. So what if we we ended the Summer Vibes series with a whole bunch more of those hot tub or pool experiences where folks from our community are following the Lord in baptism, going public with their faith. So if you are interested and maybe you'd like more information on what does baptism mean, you've never done it, maybe you did it a long time ago, maybe uh, in, a, in, a, in a, an earlier uh, religious setting, you were baptized at a really infant age and you want to talk about what it means to now as an adult uh, follow the Lord in baptism, maybe you, you have questions about following Jesus and then what that means, how where does the baptism fit and all that. Or maybe you have been coming to Impact for a while and you just have a place with a hot tub or a pool and you say, I would like to host someone following the Lord in baptism at my house. So I would love to end this series, Summer Vibes, with a whole bunch of pop-up baptism opportunities with people from our church opening up their homes so that others from our church can follow the Lord in baptism at your place we help that. We help us do that. So if you're curious about baptism, you you know you want to get baptized and you want to get get that scheduled, or you have a spot and you'd be willing to say, "Hey, I can give you an hour so that we could throw an epic baptism day all over our city, all over our community, where people from our church are following the Lord and baptism." Shoot an email to engage at impact.cc. Whether you want to host or whether you want to get dunked. Send us an email to engage at impact.cc and let's see if we can end this summer with life change happening and rippling all throughout our community. Ooh, rippling. Get it? We didn't mean for it to get it, but you know, underwater ripples. Life change happening in our community. What a phenomenal way to end this summer. You and me taking a gigantic leap towards going public with our faith. I'm here for you. We're in this together. Let's do it.
Hey church, today we're continuing with week two of our six week summer series called Summer Vibes. Last week we kicked off the series, if you were joining us virtually, we kicked it off with a message of hope. And if you're with us live, we kicked it off with a week of worship. And so that's incredible. Thank you for however you joined us, whether live or whether you joined us virtually. Thank you so much. But this is going to be an incredible series. We're going to be talking about metaphors. Uh, like what do we think of when we think of summer? We think of beaches, do we think, right? All these things that we think of when we think of summer, we're gonna be talking about all of those things and then drawing parallels to how that looks with life with Jesus. And so you're not gonna to wanna to miss that. If you miss any of these weeks, we're gonna be going through the middle of August. If you miss any of that, check it out on YouTube, anywhere, podcast or stream, Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. You wanna check it out, you don't wanna miss any of this. It's gonna be an incredible series. We're gonna talk about everything 
from rest and re relaxation. We're going to talk about love and summer flings. We're going to talk about getting a nice tan. We're going to talk about sandy beaches. And we're going to talk about the dreaded ending of summer, the end of summer. Uh, so we're going to talk about all five of those things over the course of the next five, le five weeks and then draw the parallel to life with Jesus. And so for me, well, the first thing I think about when I think of summer is rest. When I think of summer, I think of a break, <laughs> a vacation, right? I love summer vacations. I know a lot of us, we think this is going to be the time that we get a break from our routine. We're going to use our vacation days at work. We're going to go somewhere we've never been, somewhere that we've been planning all week, uh, all year. Sorry. I'm the same way. We love our family trips during the summer. We go to our favorite places, right? <laughs> but overall, when I think of summer, I think of rest. I think of a break from life. And that's what we're going to talk about. Today, we're going to talk about rest. The summer, the R&R, &R, <laughs> right? Specifically, what is rest and the Sabbath? And what does God say about the importance of rest? And then how do we rest? I know for a lot of us, we do a lot of things. We go a lot of places. We got heavy jobs, heavy loads with our families, life stresses. How do we even rest? What does that look like? So we're going to talk about that today too. But first, rest in the Sabbath. What is the Sabbath? Write this down. What is the Sabbath? It's number one, regular and routine rest. It's regular and routine rest. See, in its origin, in the beginning, God created the Sabbath as a day of rest, a day to do nothing, to not do any work. You know, right at the beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible that tells the story of how God created the heavens, how God created the earth, how this whole thing came to be, how we created the planets, the moons, the stars, the universe, the galaxy, the animals, us. In the very beginning of chapter two, after God finishes creating everything and looks back at everything and he says, wow, this is amazing. He takes a day of rest. He pauses, he takes a break, and he does that intentionally. He did that on purpose to show us this is who God is. This is who I am. And anyone who, know, who wants to know me and who reads the story of how I am, they're going to read how I rested. And actually, anyone who wants to follow into my footsteps, they're going to work into their life rest as well. They're going to work into their life Sabbath as well. Because life is frantic and we need to recharge our batteries sometimes. Even Jesus, thousands of years later in the New Testament, we see him constantly stepping away. Constantly choosing to go to some place that's quiet. And God shows that even in his son, Jesus Christ. And so he says, I want you, anyone who follows me, anyone who follows my son, anyone who follows my way of life, I want you to rest also. But he wants us to make it planned, church. He wants us to make it part of our routine. He wants us to make it regular. Throughout the Bible, throughout history, the Sabbath is weekly. It's one day of week, one day a week to do no work, to pause, to rest, to recharge your batteries, to recuperate, right? To relax. And the Jewish culture took that followed that rule strictly. They took it seriously, even to this day. And I know many other faiths that practice the Sabbath as well. And they work regular rest into their routine as well. But God wanted to make a point also that we shouldn't be slaves to a specific day because it's not about having a specific day of the week that we follow necessarily. Depends on your work schedule. You may not be able to take Sunday off because you work, okay? You take Tuesday off. Or you got a different work schedule, you take Thursday off. Or you take Sunday off. God wants us to, to make sure that we follow the heart of resting, of keeping Sabbaths for ourselves, because it's not about the specific day necessarily. It's about the rest. Even in the New Testament, Jesus constantly reminded people who were forgetting that it wasn't about the day. It was about the rest. 
In Mark chapter 2, one of the biographies of Jesus, he says this in, in verse 27 to 28. Jesus says to them, the people who he was now responding to because they confronted him, because on the Sabbath, theirs was looking a little different than theirs. Jesus says the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people, not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is the Lord, even over the Sabbath. Again, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people, not people meeting the needs of the Sabbath. Do you see what I'm saying? He said, it's not about this day of the week. It's not, you have to take Sunday off. And if you don't take Sunday off, you're horrible. It's not about that. He wants you to rest. Plan your time off. Plan your time off regularly. Take a mental break. He wants us to live life to the full church. And he knows that it requires pace. And so he knows that working a regular rhythm of rest and Sabbaths will allow us to live this life to the fullest for a long time. So we don't just burn out, church. So we know that the Sabbath is a regular and routine rest. That's what it is. But what does it look like? And I say it can look a little different from person to person. But it should look like Write this down, number two, relieving and reclining relaxation. Hmm. Relieving and reclining relaxation. In Mark chapter six, a few chapters later in the same biography of Jesus, in chapter, I'm sorry, in verse 30, 31 and 32, listen to this, it says the apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. And Jesus responded and said this, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest for a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat church. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. In this story right here that we see, Jesus' disciples had just finished a powerful ministry tour. They were casting out demons. They were doing miracles. They were doing incredible ministry. They were healing people. And they ran and told Jesus everything they did. And Jesus says, that's awesome. Let's take a break. Wow, that's incredible ministry that you've done. Let's rest. Let's go somewhere quiet. Let's recharge our batteries. Jesus made it a priority to rest, to recharge your batteries. See, God made this Sabbath, this rest, this relaxation for us, church, because he knew that we would need it. We would need the breaks from our jobs. We would need the breaks from the stresses and the worries of life. We would need the break, we would need the breaks from, breaks from just doing. We need breaks from just doing stuff. Right? And this could be our quiet time. This could be time for ourselves. This could be time where we spend time with Jesus. And it looks a little different from person to person. Some of us like to spend our relaxation reclining, right? Kicking our feet up, maybe watching TV, right? Maybe sitting on the beach, maybe sitting on a boat like the disciples did, right? And for us, that's relaxing. That's how I like to relax. <laughs> Jesus often took time away to, from the people around him, took time with his disciples away to just quiet the noise, relax, be still, talk to God, recharge, recuperate. He did it all the time. He did it regularly. So some people, we like our recharges and relaxations to be quiet, reclining with our feet up. <laughs> For us, that's relaxing. That's how we recharge. And for others, you like to spend your, your relaxation time active, doing things that fill your cup up, right? Maybe you take time away to go on a camping trip or go biking or go hiking regularly, and that recharges you. Or you travel or different forms of working out or painting or DIY house projects, right? Whatever it is, maybe, maybe you like to actually do things, and that is what charges you up and fills up your cup. 
I know my wife, she loves to do house projects. She loves that, right? Whatever and however best fills your tank. Do your R&R your way, but do it. Make sure you do it. Make sure you're taking time for yourself, taking time for God, stepping away, doing things that fill your cup. Because God knows we, we need our cups to be refilled, don't we? And God knew that. He knew that we couldn't keep this pace, keep this rat race, keep this forever. We need to recharge. We need to recalibrate. We need to rest. We need to relax. We need to Sabbath. So it can be different for different people. Some people like to do theirs actively doing stuff. Some people like to keep their feet up and relax. But recharge. Do what fills your cup up. Because when we come to God, Jesus says, come to me and I will take your load. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. Give it to me and I will give you rest. Jesus says, church. So let's walk with God and let's allow ourselves some regular and routine rest, church. Because when we do take our breaks, oh, it fills our cup so much, doesn't it? It feels so good. Energizes us. So when we do, let's make sure it's relieving for us. Let's make sure it's reclining, if that's how we like to do it. Whatever way fills our cups. But let's enjoy our breaks. Let's do our breaks our way. Let's do them God's way. However we take our Sabbaths and rest. But let's make sure we do them, church. Because we don't want to burn out. And we're not meant to just do this life and barely survive. We're meant to thrive, church. In John 10, 10, Jesus says, I came to give you life and life to the full, life abundantly, he says. And we can't do that unless we recharge and we recoup and we relax and we get some R&R &R and we take Sabbaths so that we can live life to its fullest and we can live it for a long time. We don't want to just survive, church. We want to thrive. Because God makes Sabbaths for us. So let's use them. <laughs> Again, God makes Sabbaths, church, for us. So let's use them. And as we wrap up today, as we're thinking about the God who created the Sabbath, the God who says, I love my people so much, I want them to rest. Let's remember him. Let's remember his life. Let's remember his love. Let's remember his sacrifice. Let's remember his death on the cross, his body that he gave, his blood that he shed on the cross for us, the price that he paid for our sin, for us so that we don't have to pay it, the gift that he gave to us that we freely get to accept. And we take some time with our elements, whatever reminds you of his body, bread, <laughs> cracker, sandwich, <laughs> chips, and we take that element and whatever reminds you of his blood that he shed, wine, juice, water, soda, whatever. And let's take time and remember the life that he gave and the life that he lived for us. And then also, let's take time to give back. Let's take time to continue to be generous people. Let's give sacrificially, church. Let's give cheerfully, church. Because what we have, it's a blessing. Whatever it is we have, however much we have, it's a blessing and we thank God for it. So let's give a portion back to him as he says, because he is so good to us. He has never let us down. He's so faithful. Let's continue to be a generous people. And you can give online, on the website. You can give, uh, you can do a text to give. You can give live on Sunday, in person. So many different ways to give, but continue to give and be generous because God has been generous to us. As we close up and as we think about this Sabbath, this rest, this recuperation, this summer, take rest this week. Take rest this summer. God gave us Sabbaths, so let's use them. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much 
Thank you so much that you laid out the blueprint for how this is supposed to be done. Thank you so much that you documented it in your word that we can look at it and read it and learn from your life thousands and thousands of years later. You are so good to us. We love you so much. Thank you for providing the blueprint to tell us to rest, for telling us that it's important to just not go, 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 but work into our pattern and rhythm and routine of rest, of doing nothing for a bit, of recharging, of recouping, of taking our Sabbaths. God, we love you and thank you. May we do all that you would want us to do in this life. And that includes Sabbaths. That includes taking breaks. And may we do all of those things so that we can have life to the very fullest like you want us to have. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.